in Tosaki's poetic refrain. Somebody don't ran off with all of my stuff. I can relate to that. I think somebody stole my stuff, stuff too. I'm beginning to think that somebody stole it like a dirty thief in the night, ran off with it like a marathon runner, carrying a baton, stole it like it was a duffel bag full of freshly minted designer clothes. This wasn't an average theft. Not that somebody don't took all of the potato salad kind of, kind of crime, but a crime no less. I know you may be wondering, who's the culprit? I'll tell you, motherhood. That's right, motherhood. If you can't see by now, I'm a black mother, which means that I have responsibilities to teach my children what being African American means in the United States. I wanna tell you about three specific thefts that occurred over the years. The first one being in 2009, I took my two-year-old daughter to see The Princess and the Frog. Now this was a major accomplishment for Disney itself. It was the first African-American Disney princess. So it was unprecedented in its portrayal of a black girl as royalty. But when I got in the film, in the movie, all I saw was a frog. In fact, for a runtime of one hour and 38 minutes, Princess Tiana spent more time on screen as a green amphibian than she did as an actual black princess. A jumping, slimy, green, disgusting frog. I swelled up in anger. But I didn't want to leave the movie because it was a movie that my daughter chose. So what did I do? I stayed and suffered. I suffered through Princess Tiana's aspirations of wanting to be in the service industry as a chef. Her status as a princess only through marriage and the impossibility of her living in the same fantastical world as other white Disney princesses. But it was the appearance of Mommy Odie that caused me to have an out of body experience. Wait, I've seen her before. Big, black, smiling, is it Mammy, the ever-loving black woman that puts the needs of her benevolent white family above all else? I sit uncomfortably in my seat, moving from left to right, and listen to her talk. I can hear it in the line she speaks. You ain't got the sense God gave you. What is this? What the fuck is this? I started looking around the theater, hoping that I would see other faces that showed the same disgust as mine, but I didn't. Look at her, look at her. Her familiar face bulging out of a head tie. I came to the theater to see black royalty and I ran smack dab into a black stereotype. Now the second theft was in 2012. We had just moved to Brooklyn from Georgia and we were obsessed with the city. The beauty of the city, people sitting on the stoops, the noise the city made, it made walking to school one of our greatest accomplishments from the day. So imagine my surprise when one day we walked upon splattered graffiti on the side of a building that read, I hate niggers and Jews. My daughter stopped walking. I stopped too, although she was a couple of steps in front of me. Silence. There was no usual New York City noise. I didn't hear any horns frantically blowing, no music blaring outside an open apartment window, no sirens roaring down the street, no couple arguing on the block, no kids clamoring with each other as they walked to school, no hustle man trying to sell his wares, no Korean grocer spraying the sidewalk in front of his store. Nothing. It was just us and the words. After what seemed like a lifetime, my daughter turned to me and said, Mommy, What's a nigger? For which I stumbled. Um, come on, mommy, tell me, tell me. What's a nigger? What's a nigger? I pretended like I was doing something with her book bag. I said, hey, stop fidgeting. I need to put this in your book bag. Mommy, mommy, what's a nigger? What's a nigger? I pulled her close to me and I said, nigger is a bad word. It's made to make people like us with brown skin feel bad about ourselves. Don't answer to it. It is not you. What name do you answer to? She said, Raja Ferdinand. I said, well, that's it. We continued our walk to school, but something was different. 
It made me think back to my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Seltzer, who spanked me for painting Little Red Riding Hood black. I remember her words to this day. Little Red Riding Hood is white. She can never be black. And if you think that's something, that pales in comparison to the teacher I met this same year when moving to New York City that once told me after meeting with me about my daughter's behavior in class that I know how this may sound, but you can't expect our children to be ready for a black child and you can't force people to accept this. That teacher, I wanted to slap her senseless, reminding her that it's New York City but I didn't want to be labeled as an angry black woman. There again, I was backed up into a stereotype. So what did I do? Got up, thanked her for her time and left. The last step occurred in 2017 when me and my daughter were planning uh, a dance party for our annual holiday celebration. We sit back with choosing music and all of a sudden I hear her singing Chris Brown's uh, word lyrics, put your panties to the side. I jumped up out of my seat. I said, wait a minute. She says, what's wrong with this? I said, what's right with it? Then I thought about it. I told her, let's change the format. Let's do some spoken word. She said, what's that? I said, that's why we will put our words over music, imported words. I'll go first, I told her. I started thinking about the words and I began to write. You are special, beautifully made. Believe it first, you sparkle in the shade, glow in the dark, mark magic in your stance. Hold the world together with the clap of your hands. You mimic no one. You stand on mountains in. You start and move the earth. You brush against the wind. You fly with the birds, water stand at your feet. You kiss the moon, you hold the sun's heat. I proudly sat back after I wrote those words. And the first thing she says to me is, I hate it. And I'm not doing it. Ooh, in that moment, I hated her directness. I hated the look she carried on her face when she said those words. I hated the way her shoulders, indicated by their slight slump, showed her disdain for my efforts. And I hated most vehemently the words she spewed at me. Vitriol hate. But I didn't tell her that. It was one of those mothering moments that you have to keep to yourself, sucking shit up and grinning. So you see, motherhood has some, stole something from me, stole it like a one-eyed pirate robbing sailors aboard a stranded vessel, ran off with it like a river carrying someone's possessions after a flood, stole it like it was a diamond just dug out of a South African mine. Average theft? I think not. Not the somebody just stole my seat kind of robbery. A robbery no less. No less so than had it been committed by an armed bandit at gunpoint or by a pickpocket brandishing a butcher knife. There are so many ways in which my life could have turned out differently. But had I not become a mother, I likely wouldn't have been responsible for teaching someone else how to cope with stereotypes and resist and combat racial discrimination and oppression. I wouldn't have to watch someone grow up in a world that is hostile towards them. And I wouldn't have to always be on guard and alert from the outside world and be prepared for when it has permeated the inside of my safe space. So hell yeah, somebody stole my stuff. My stuff is the anonymous ripped off treasure of the year said Ntosoki Shange. If you can't see what motherhood stole from me, check your vision or check your hands. Thank you, Renata Ferdinand.